Let's take a look at the basic instrument panel in a Cessna 172R. Thanks to slow motion, we have plenty of time. The first instrument is the airspeed indicator. Basically, you want to stay in the green arc, avoid the red line, and pay close attention to this device throughout the flight. Someone once said, it only takes two things to fly, airspeed and money. If you're up there with no airspeed, it won't matter how much money you have. To the right, you see the attitude indicator. Thanks to a handy gyroscope, this unit accurately portrays the pitch and roll of your airplane. It's a good reference point to check when making turns, climbs, and descents to keep things precise. Next comes the altimeter. Because this is a very sensitive barometer and measures air pressure, it tells you how high you are above sea level, not above the ground. You always adjust a unit for barometric pressure at the airfield prior to departure. The next device is another gyroscope combined with a steel ball and a glass tube. The gyro gives you turn information, letting you know if you're turning left or right. The ball is a skid or slip indicator. Generally speaking, you want to have the ball in the center, which means you are in coordinated flight. That is, no skid or slip. Another gyroscope, this one is a heading indicator. Prior to departure, you adjust it to match the magnetic compass on the dashboard, which has a tendency to bounce around during flight. The gyro is a little more stable and does have to be checked during the course of a flight for accuracy. Finally, the vertical speed indicator. This unit tells you how many feet per minute you are ascending or descending. It's a good idea to learn to pitch your airplane for precise rates going both up and down in order to make for a comfortable and professional flight. Typically, these first six instruments are referred to as the six-pack because of their number and organization in the panel. When making a flight under visual flight rules, these instruments will serve you well during basic maneuvers. Over here are two VOR dials. By entering in the frequency of a VOR station into the navigation radios, it is possible to follow a course to or from that station by dialing in a specific radio. The needle then swings to the left or right, indicating where your airplane is relative to that particular radio coming from the station. You can also use a pair of stations to pinpoint your location where two radials cross. If you've ever been lost when you're flying, it comes in handy. These are your communication and navigation radios organized in a stack here in the center of the console. Each one allows you to enter two frequencies so you can flip between them during the flight much more easily than if you had to adjust the dial. Over here you have the tachometer, which of course gives you the RPM of the engine. Again, it's good to avoid the red line. Moving to the other side of the panel again, you'll find oil temperature and pressure gauges along with indicators for vacuum and amps, exhaust gas temperatures, and fuel flow. These are all important to monitor during the flight as many engine and instrument systems are dependent upon the proper ranges in these items. Without them, you'll have an instrument or an engine failure. forget that airspeed indicator. A wing will only generate lift with sufficient airspeed. Otherwise, you're riding in a brick. This has been a general overview of the basic instruments in a Cessna 172, the typical airplane that you might learn to fly.